Two years, yes. You were in Lahore in the run-up to partition. As I understand it, you were aligned with the left politically at that time, very clearly so. When did you realize that partition was going to happen? It wasn't simply a Muslim League slogan, it was actually going to happen. You kindly uh, take you slightly autobiographical. Uh, both my parents and myself, we were involved in freedom struggle. So my involvement with the left movement and students movement was not marginal. It was a deep involvement. And it's very interesting for me to recall before 47, I, along with two of my friends, was present in that session of Muslim League in Lahore, where the resolution for setting up a Pakistan was formed. Uh, there is no that, that pillar of uh, memory in Lahore. I, I was present in that session. It is remarkable that you were present. What was it? Uh, Jinnah spoke in English, I know, at that session. Yes, Jinnah, I had two memories of Jinnah particularly. In 1937, uh, I was a student uh, and Jinnah came to converse for elections for Muslim League. And 1937 was the election where Jinnah could get only three seats. Punjab rejected him. And the speech that he made was in a hall called Lajpatrai Hall, next to my hostel. It was a very thinly attended meeting, about 100 of us. And he couldn't attract audience, I was present there. Then I am talking of this when this resolution was passed, 45 I think. Uh, also when I recollect, it's very interesting, as a boy of 11, I was present at Lahore session of the Congress where freedom resolution was passed. Because my parents had gone there and they had taken me along. And that is the first imprint on my mind. I have seen that resolution being passed. I have seen Nehru's uh, procession riding a horse. I have also seen the Gandhi's announcement of complete freedom. As a then after that, the freedom struggle en enveloped our family also. So from 1930 onwards, both my parents were in jail in every movement. I was arrested for the first time as a very young boy in 30, 31, uh, for a couple of days, and but thrashed by the police. Uh, in 1942, I was arrested, and I was in jail for most of my postgraduate studies. I did my MA from, from Christian College. I was involved in the students' movement very intimately. I was president of the Lahore Students' Union and also general secretary of the Punjab Students' Federation. Were you in, in the CPI at that time? Yes, CPI I joined subsequently to begin with because ultimately the, the movement, students' movement was greatly under the influence of the CPI. So therefore the left movement enveloped me at that time. When, uh, as we started moving towards freedom, uh, the I had, after my finishing my college in 40, uh, 42, uh, in 44, I had gone and settled in Karachi. So I was living in Karachi when freedom came. But before that, in 46, when the first time it was announced that freedom is coming, I was in Punjab at my hometown, Jhelum, and the riots had begun. And the riots were enveloping the whole area, the first series of riots. Uh, when the 47 was coming, the riots were ascending. Uh, and since I was living in Lahore, in Karachi, but I had come to Lahore because my younger brother, the painter Gujral, Sitish Gujral, I was living in the whole Lahore was in flames. It was impossible to even move about. That type of situation had come. Uh, as a part of the left movement, this type of danger of riots and migration never occurred to me at that time. Uh, and the leftists had uh, deluded themselves into believing that this could be uh, before the without these things and that is why it was their faulty assessment of the partition of India which youngsters got influenced that most of their leaders joined even the Muslim League Mia Iftakharuddin uh, Mazhar Ali Khan Daniel Latifi they are my all my contemporaries Daniel Latifi is my contemporary so was Mazhar Ali and so was Mahmood Ali. Uh, these these uh, 
as a matter of fact when i was general secretary of students federation mr ali was the president so we are very close so were you at one point campaigning for pakistan on the orders of the cpm yes the silliest thing was that the this line was being sold that as if his right of determination for minorities does not mean pakistan is that a type of um, very foolish uh, construction placed uh, anyhow when partition came uh, ultimately that time i was in karachi when partition came we never thought they would migrate that is why my father chose to be a member of the pakistan constituent assembly and the first session of the constituent assembly which was held in karachi i attended the whole of it because my father was in karachi and he was we was he was staying with us uh, it was in that session that i heard that jinnah speech which he said it is in no way a secular state and is not a also at the same time the adoption of the flag and adoption of the uh, constitution first constitution uh, and adoption of the uh, his title as qaid azam that was a actually see the independence day celebrations in karachi on the 14th of august yes as a matter of fact i see saw there i saw uh, the procession of jinnah and moon batten together in that open car uh, but the, the indian independence we heard on that radio that night and they was traced with destiny uh, the difficulty was that even when the first session of the constituent assembly was going on the riots in punjab had accelerated or murder and flames so i remember uh, liaquat ali khan calling all the congress members of the constituent assembly and discussing with them as to what could be done to stop the riots uh, and all the people from punjab particularly who were elected they were there talking about independence day in karachi i've spoken to mr advani who was in karachi on that day so was i and he says he didn't attend any of the celebrations he had no sense of exhilaration uh, he says most of the hindus in karachi for example school students would not take sweets on that day at school because they didn't think there was anything to celebrate what was your personal feeling Where, did you there was a, no of the new nation no main difficulty was that the events were moving so fast it is very difficult to determine as to what would happen and therefore whether somebody took sweets or did not take sweets i don't know because i did not see sweets being distributed anywhere so But did you have a sense of exhilaration that you, that independence had been yes that the british rule was over yes uh, uh i was still present in karachi when gandhi was murdered and the impact was so much that suddenly the whole market closed and there was a great deal of sorrow uh ultimately this was, i had first riots took place in karachi uh in uh in dates i don't remember now and that was the time when we decided we have to migrate uh, my father uh, uh, was at still attending the session when he came to delhi to talk to gandhi ji as to what could be done and then it was decided that uh, exchange a population in punjab so he was assigned the task of going back to the district and take charge of my of uh, evacuation of the non muslims our jhelum district was a very difficult district a ravines all round and the population was uh, that in a village there would be one family of hindus or two families of six that type of so but anyhow he continued this effort till about end of may he ultimately came out because outside our house which was on the river bank itself in the camp of the tribals was set up to cross the river and enter the kashmir state so the life became very difficult uh, we were able to get people many people out but the riots killings were still going on all the time and the safe the routes were always very unsafe I flew out from Karachi after the riots. Uh, as a matter of fact, my flying out was facilitated by Ghazan Farali Khan, 
uh, he was my father's colleague and friend. We came from same place. So when he heard of the riots in Karachi, he was in Lahore himself. He asked his private secretary to contact me. I had shifted from my house to a hotel because my family had come out already. already. Uh, and they, so therefore they booked a seat for me to come to Delhi. And that is how I landed in Delhi. My wife uh, and my mother, they came out by ship earlier uh, from Karachi to Kandala and then by train. It took them about 10-15 days to get there because riots were going on everywhere. Uh, the early memories of Delhi were also very, very hard. Rotting in Chandni Chowk. Yes. When those riots took place of that, then I was in Karachi. By the time I came, ultimately, Delhi had almost quietened. Tension, tense, but quietened. Was your father involved in recovering abducted women? Tomorrow? Yes, because he, first, we were able to evacuate. Then the abducted women he had to bring out. And uh, by the time, ultimately, we brought out, about 20 or 25 girls were such whose families were not traced or who were not acceptable. So both my mother and my father started a, a sort of a ashram for them in their own house. And ultimately it has come to a very big major center in Jalandhar now. It is Nari Niketan. And uh, it is now run by the trust. I am chairman of that trust. Where it is a home for the women and for children, unwanted children. And also a school. And it was started by abducted women who were brought over from the other side, who had nowhere to go. Uh, th this, this is where nucleus on which the ashram was built, mm. about 25 of them. And are any of those abducted women still there, or are they all...? No. Hardly, because much time has passed. Uh, but the this uh, ashram is continuing. Many other women have come. Uh, this trust was formed. My mother was a main trustee. After her death, I have taken over. And uh, we are running it. Uh, it is now very flourishing in the sense large trust, large school uh, and for unwanted children and homeless uh, women. Did you come across or did your father come across and talk about cases of women who had been abducted who did not want to be returned? Two, two I particularly remember. Uh, one of them particularly was the one whose family we personally knew. She was abducted. And by the time we traced her, and we, not we, I mean, I don't myself, my father. And uh, this lady had been abducted. She had been married off to somebody. And she had produced one more child. So when uh, my father contacted her, she started crying like hell. And she said, now don't pull me again. I once suffered. I have come here. And now I will go back. She had two sons on this side also. She didn't know which world to choose. She had one child there, two children here. She didn't know what to choose. It was an absolute pathetic story. I another family. What happened to her? She didn't come. She stayed with the, the Muslim who. Yes, her. yes, yes. She continued. Another case was that a, a child of one of my cousins. Uh, they were living in the uh, that part of uh, Jammu Kashmir state called. Bimber, and when the rush began, he was lost. He was then about four or five years. So some local person picked him up, kept him in his family, grew him up, gave him a different name, got him, got ultimately married him off. Years and years later, I think about uh, 1960 or so. Uh, one of the local persons wrote to them that your son is here. So they got in touch with him. And he crossed over, he came. He has come back. He has married again here and he is now in business in a small place near Rurki. Does he regard himself as a Muslim or a Hindu? At that time he had a Muslim name. He has come back to his religious uh, Hindu fold. Uh, all those women who came back, they had pathetic stories. Particularly the atrocity stories were terrible. 
you know and when you talk to my brother he will tell you what he has seen himself when i remember that when my father was evacuating people and the first uh, place had to be our own home in jelim and every day there was a danger there would be attack from outside and almost all the women always carried a poison foil in their pocket they did attack comes they would swallow these were hindu and sikh women hindu and sikhs uh huge and migration was a big problem because to get trucks even trucks were in danger on the passage trains were attacked but when i see this thing i must say that it was the atrocity stories both sides the man became animal and beast both sides that did you see the raiders who were going into kashmir did you see them yourself you said no my brother because i didn't go that side after that i came from karachi and stayed on here i didn't go that side but my brother stayed on with my father my mother had come away so my father because they didn't want to keep women there so my mother and two sisters they came out and father stayed on he used to come here once in a two three weeks to report to gandhi ji again about the progress of evacuation as to what how much had been done how much still remain to be done what was your father's name avtar narayan kuchral when did you break with the cpi my real break came in 42 emotionally 42 movement i couldn't swallow their line but links and friendships continued which they still continue so there for general that type of thing but accepting the line from 42 onwards i was not able to even in pakistan i was not hearty on this because i couldn't accept this that hindus and muslims could be separated so you didn't follow you didn't follow no, the self determination no no no, no. i did. personally did not did you have arguments with the likes of daniel latifi over it you see in the communist system there are no arguments you either accept or you don't and you didn't i did looking back on partition you saw your family saw a great deal of suffering do you think it was necessary do you think it was inevitable you see partition by itself was unnatural uh now it is all over i must say our not only i saw it our family suffered immensely we lost everything so like lakhs and lakhs of others we also st- i also started my life from scratch uh, because everything you see we had nothing on this side i was born in jhelum i was educated in lahore my mother's parents were in lahore i was living in karachi so everything was that side so when we came out we started life again from scratch well we have done reasonably all right but do you regard partition as something which is in the past something under which a line has been drawn or something which is still being played out in south asia it is being still played out and i in this office particularly i see the uh, the hangover of that that is unfortunate part of Do you ever when you're dealing with what you call the hangover of partition do you ever wonder what the situation might be today if partition had not taken place Yes if I think uh, this subcontinent would have gone much ahead uh, the progress would have been much faster we would not have been lost in our own internal turmoils but that saying that does not mean that in any case i am in, in any way wary of undoing it i think now we are two nations i am only keen that we should live like friends and cooperate but do you look on partition as a sadness or a tragedy 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 of huge dimension no it is behind us so most of its uh, 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 tragic dimensions we have forgotten and since almost everybody who came away has reason done reasonably well here <coughs> but uh, it was a tragedy when i recall it does your personal recollection of that tragedy influence your approach to your present assignment yes it does it makes me more human and it makes me more compassionate 
and it makes me look at the people in Pakistan as a kin and not as enemies.